hello welcome to everyone in this video uh, today we want to <laughs> discuss about the question which are asked in the previous year calcutta university 2022 on the paper cc8 that is the mathematical methods 3 uh, for semester 4 look at the question this is actually part 2 part 1 already covered this is the question you can see this is 22 question and uh, in the year of 2022 you can see this is the mathematical physics 3 question number 1 already discussed in the part a, oh, a. so part 1 we already discussed this question a to g right today we want to discuss question number 2 and question number 3 this wants to will be discussed in this video i request all of you please try to solve this question yourself after that you continue the video to watch the solution right and in upcoming session we will be covered this question number 4, 5, 6, 6 or 7 and 8 right so let's start first uh, says that prove that u which is 2x 1 minus y is harmonic harmonic means it satisfies the laplace equation you know this is nothing but the laplace equation laplace equation so any function which satisfies the laplace equation is called the harmonic here the given function u is 2x 1 minus y so you take the partial derivative with respect to x this gives you 2 1 minus y and, and then taking uh, again the second order partial derivative with respect to x there is no x function so this will gives you 0 and similarly for partial derivative with respect to y you gives you 2x into minus 1 and taking uh, second order partial derivative with respect to y gives you 0 so their addition must be 0 so it satisfy Laplace equation hence it is a harmonic next question says find function v such that f of z is u plus i v is analytic so the given function u is 2x 1 minus y you need to satisfy find out another proportion of this analytic function v so you know for any analytic function satisfy the causal remand equation which says del u del x equals to del v del y and del u uh, del y is minus del v del x so you, you, you we already find out del u del x in the previous one that is 2 1 minus y and del u del y is already find out that is minus 2x so use these two you can see that is del u del x x del v del y so del v del y is 2 1 minus y if you integrating you will be obtained that is 2 y minus y square by 2 and constant which is function of x and here del u del y which is equals to minus del v del x so del v del x is 2x so if you integrating you will find out this one which is function of y so combine these two things that is here is y function this is c1 x function that is x square and this c2 is y function that is a. so if you combine these two things you will be obtain the expression of v that is x square plus 2 y minus y square by 2 clear next portion says that express f of z in terms of z you know z is nothing but x plus iota y so if you put this f of z is uh, already defined that is u plus iota v so u plus iota v u which is function of x and y and v which also function of x and y so you put this expression of u which already given in this question that is 2x 1 minus y and v we obtain recently uh, just uh, find out the expression of v so put these two expression and rearranging them you just product these two things and taking into 2x and this is 2 iota y in this portion and this minus 1 taken as the i square and this is iota x square minus 1 so taking the common iota you will be obtained x square 2x iota y and minus y square that is iota y whole square right so you will be obtain this expression and put this value x plus iota y at z you will be obtain the expression f of z in terms of z that is 2z plus iota z square okay so i think clear about the solution of this question go to the next question this is question a of 2 this is the question number b which says prove that the real and imaginary part of an analytic function of a complex variable when expressed in polar form satisfy the Laplace equation in this form so the analytic function satisfy the cauchy driven equation you know just written in, in the Cartesian coordinate that x y if you 
transform into the polar coordinate this will be turned into this one okay i think we need not did not prove in this question this portion if <coughs> if you want to prove uh, I, I already proved in previous lecture okay so if you just uh, uh, write down this polar form directly that is del u del r uh, r theta is the polar polar coordinate and xy is the cartesian coordinate so del u del r equal to 1 by r del v del theta and del v del r equals to minus 1 by r del u del theta now the laplace equation in 2d you know del 2 psi del x square plus del x del y square equals to 0 uh, if you just uh, taking the derivative of this with respect to r partial derivative with respect to r you will be obtained that is del 2 v del r del theta that is del r of del v del theta del v del theta is nothing but r into del u del r okay so taking the derivative that is r into del to this one and taking the partial derivative r is 1 so you will be obtained this one and uh, and similarly you take this uh, in this equation del 2 v del theta del l theta of del v del r that is then uh, taking the partial derivative with respect to theta you will be obtained this one since these two are equal so easily you can write this at the uh, equal and taking in one side and dividing by r you will be obtained this equation so this is expression of u similarly you can obtain the same expression in case of v just taking this uh, sorry just taking the partial derivative with respect to uh, in case of u okay so you will be obtained this expression with respect to v so these two are similar in 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 general form you just put in the in case of u and v you, can, you put this side so this will be proved as we question asked so i think clear about the solution of this question go to the next one which says locate and name all the singularities of this function so in this function you can see that is if you put z equals to 1 that's become infinite infinite so z equals to 1 is a is a is a pole so if you just find out the um, order uh, order of the pole just we get that is z minus 1 whole q f of z and calculating which is not equals to 0 so this is a pole of order 3 similarly you will be obtained in case of z equals to minus 2 third if you put z equals to minus 2 third this is also gives you uh, this limit which is not equal to 0 so this is another pole of order 2 so will you obtain z equals to 1 is a pole of order 3 z equal to minus 2 third is also a pole of order 2 right so so determine whether the singularity that z equals to infinite is a pole or not you just put z equals to 1 by t right so just substituting z equals to 1 by 2 and rearranging you will be obtained this expression with 1 by t cube so 1 by t cube means t equals to 0 gives you the infinite form so t equals to 0 means t equals to 0 means z equals to infinity so at that point you will be obtained not equals to 0 so this t equals to 0 is a pole of order 3 hence z equals to infinite is also pole of order of 3 so here you will be obtained 3 point z equals to 1 z equals to minus 2 third and z equals to 3 of the order of 3 2 and 3 ok this is the answer of this question next question said find the Lorentz expansion of the function f of z which is 1 by z square 1 minus z with the domain 0 to 1 so if you just uh, taking 1 minus z will be minus 1 and just binomial theorem you know the expression of 1 minus x whole to the power minus 1 is like that put this value and product with the 1 by z square will be obtained this expression and this is nothing but the Lorentz series this is nothing but the Lorentz series and uh, by residue theorem you know that is a inverse z to the power this is the residue 1 is the residue coefficient of the 1 by z is the residue next question says evaluate this integration ok so there is two integration just uh, take the first one that is e to the power 2 z by 1 plus z whole q dz so this has a pole at z equals to minus 1 because at z equals to minus 1 this gives you infinite and if you just uh, find out this limiting value here is not equals to 0 so hence this is a pole of order 3 since this is a pole of order 3 so this residue at that point by residue theorem that is uh, we already discussed in the previous lecture this formula use this formula uh, that is uh, 3 so that is 2 factorial and the second order derivative of this one uh, taking the derivative will be obtained this expression so this is the residue and 
by residue theorem this integral value is nothing by 2 pi iota in sum of the residue here only one pole so residue is one so just put this value we obtain this result of integral value is 4 pi iota by e square so from that point you need to from that point you need to up direction that is okay i think clear next the next uh, integrate integration that is uh, cosine and that one so for that you need to consider that is e to the power iota az z square plus one you know this expression of e to the power iota az uh, form of cosine and sine right so within the control like that that is x axis and this is nothing but the y axis this is y axis so just taking this control integration and you can see this is uh, infinite or the pole that is z equals to plus iota and minus iota but uh, z equals to minus iota is the outside of the control so only z equals to iota is within the control so residue at z equals to iota <coughs> just uh, residue uh, finding the residue formula will be obtained this one by residue theorem you can see this is uh, 2 pi iota in sum of the all residue is like that if you change this control integral in two part that is minus r to 1 and with this gamma integration okay from this expression that is e to the power i a is the cosine and iota sine right you can see this is the even function and this is the odd function since the limit is symmetric so this will be 0 and this will be 2 into 0 to r like 1 and this one so this is written in this form okay I think clear <coughs> this odd function is 0 even function is 2 multiplied in the integration and this one taking the limit at uh, r tends to infinity when r tends to infinity the integral value will be um, uh, like that this integral value is all you need to prove i think you did not need to prove this one because because when r tends to infinity this is uh, flatted on the x axis this is flatted on the x axis so this part will be zero like that so after that you will be obtained only this one and finally you will be got the integral value i think clear about the solution of this question if there is any doubt you must comment in the comment box okay so this already cover in the question number two and three in the upcoming session we will be covered uh, the upcoming question also so this is all about me this is my contact detail and this is my youtube channel so take care we will meet to the next video as soon as possible thank you